What's up, YouTube? I want to do this video on uh, traveling with a firearm on an airline. I just got back from the NRA convention in Atlanta. Had an awesome time. Saw some super cool stuff there. Um, and it was my first time flying with a firearm. So, um, like a lot of you guys might be, I was pretty um, anxious, I guess, or I wasn't really sure what to do or where to get information. I thought, oh man, what if I do something wrong or don't pack something right? Crap, I'm going to go to jail or I'm going to be in trouble or I'm going to miss my flight. But it was a whole lot easier than I thought it was. And I'm going to show you um, how I did it, like uh, show you the, the safes that I used and tell you what I had to go through. It was super easy. It doesn't cost any more money than uh, just a regular check bag. And uh, this experience is based on Texas and uh, Georgia Airlines. So I live in Texas and I uh, flew back from Georgia, obviously, and this is on, on American. So um, the different airlines may have different rules, but I think it's pretty much um, the same basic guidelines across the board as far as uh, flying with a firearm. So I took a, a small concealed carry pistol with me. Um, there were a lot of guys I saw uh, that, that had um, you know rifles and things like that, and it's pretty much the same thing. Um, so let me show you what I got here. This is all of my NRA 2017 swag, as you can see. Um, but this right here is the box that I got, and this is the box that it came, the packaging that it came in. It's the Nano Vault 100. I got it from Academy Sports and Outdoors, and it was actually on sale for I think twelve dollars. It was regular twenty-five bucks. They just happened to be having a sale at the exact time that I needed one. So it was awesome. Um, and it even says here, um, well, I think on the other side, somewhere inside the paperwork, it says uh, TSA approved, which um, the TSA doesn't really have a list of boxes or safes or whatever you want to call them that are safe for firearms. There's a couple rules um, and qualifications that your box has to have. You, um, it has to be able to lock and um, it cannot crush when you press on it and then um, also you can't pry one of the edges up and see the firearm uh, there's a couple more uh, rules but those, those are the basic ones here so the um, little safe here that I got came with two keys and this is exactly how I had the firearm when I flew with it so you need to keep um, some airlines say you can put the ammo in with the firearm but uh, American said the ammo had to be separate the ammunition needs to be either in the uh, factory original box or in a case specifically designed for ammunition that keeps them in their own individual little spot here. And the reason why is they don't want uh, loose ammo with the primers um, out available to touch anything at all in the bag. So this is exactly how I had my ammunition except I had a piece of electrical tape around it. Um, and this was just loose in my checked bag. Um, this right here was also in my checked bag. I've got four magazines here, all empty. And I have my holster, and then I had my, uh, my firearm in there. So again, all, uh, all empty. And pretty much what I did was uh, just walk up to the uh, check bag line. And when I was getting ready to check my bag in, I put my bag on the scale and I said, I just need to declare a firearm. Well, leaving Texas, right there uh, at the uh, check bag line with my luggage on the scale, they asked me to open up my suitcase, get out this uh, safe right here, and open it up. And I was surprised they actually had me open it and everything. But anyway, opened it up. Um, the woman there kind of looked at the magazines, asked, and she asked me if the uh, gun was unloaded because I had a magazine in it. Um, oops. I had a magazine in, just like I had showed you, just like that. She asked me if it was unloaded. I said yes. Um, she didn't ask anything else about, you know, she didn't ask me to take it out or check the magazine. But she could see that these were empty. And then uh, past that, they asked me for my driver's license. Um, I gave them that. And that was pretty much it. I put this thing back in the box. They did put a uh, red tag on my, on my large carry-on bag, or not carry-on, sorry, on my large checked bag. And uh, then I got on the plane. That was pretty much it. Super easy. Um, when I got to Georgia to pick up my bag, 
my luggage with the red tag on the top of it was actually in a closed room for oversized bags. So uh, I guess, you know, a little bit of added security to make sure that the owner of the firearm definitely gets their bag back. You know, it doesn't go out on the carousel. And, um, and I just picked it up from there. I showed them my ID and my boarding pass. That was it. Really, I mean, super easy. There wasn't anything extra beyond that. Um, it was a little bit different flying back from Georgia. Um, I walked up to the baggage area, or the, the baggage, um, you know, check-in area. And they asked me, I told them I had a firearm to declare. And they had me actually go to a different, uh, different station, which was, um, I guess like an oversized bag check-in spot. There were a lot of guys with rifles there, golf clubs, um, and things that were shaped kind of weird, I guess. So then you're, I was not allowed to be in the area. They took my bag from me and I told them where the, uh, where the firearm was. They opened it up, searched the whole bag, made sure there was no, uh, loose ammo which is very important in the bag. They found this, said it was all good. Saw this box here. Oh, and I had the keys, of course. There were no keys in it. Um, and uh, that was it. They put the same red tag on it from uh, that I got in the Texas American Airlines. And then they uh, put it on the plane, and that was it. Same thing when I went to pick it up. It was in a separate room. So really, really easy. I did go ahead and get a TSA approved locks for my big checked bag but then this lock here or the padlocks that you put on your case that you get cannot be TSA approved um, so that's something to consider there make sure you you know if you're gonna put locks on your on your big bag they need to have they need to be TSA approved and make sure that the actual small case um, for your firearm you have not TSA approved locks um, that's really all there is to it. It was really easy. Uh, if you have any questions, definitely put them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Like I said, you know, this is the first time I did this and I was um, a little apprehensive about the whole thing, but it was just, man, it was a piece of cake. Um, definitely, you know, would have no problem doing it again with larger guns like rifles and things. Now, rifles are going to be a little bit different because you're probably going to have a large, you know, rifle case. But um, yeah, anyway... You want to take a look at, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff I got from the convention here. You can see ridiculous amount of stickers I got. I actually had to tell people to stop giving me stickers because my bag was so full. All kinds of stickers. We got some patches. Um, Century Arms had some had some pretty neat patches. Uh, Seekins t-shirt, you know, a couple backpacks, a couple hats. Um, and then what I thought was pretty neat was Extreme Bullets was actually giving away samples of projectiles. So that was cool. And then I did pick up a uh, United States Tactical uh, EDC belt. So this is not a super rigid belt. It's just a, uh, just a good everyday uh, two inch belt. It's got some good flex to it, but it's also sturdy enough um, that you can, you, know, you, can, you can put some equipment on it. And it has the... Uh, Cobra latch. So I've been wanting to get one of these for a while. I saw their booth out there. Um, I know these guys not very well, but I do know them. So I wanted to support them if I could. And then also one of their sister companies that they were out there with was uh, Red Rock Outdoor Gear. So I picked up their cross draw vest. Um, I don't have a vest and I'm wanting to take a couple tactical pistol classes. Um, so I needed to go ahead and grab one of these anyway. And they're uh, at the convention, they were only 45 bucks, which is a killer deal. So I'll definitely do a gear review on that. I mean, probably the belt too. But anyway, uh, like I said, if you have questions on uh, anything you saw here or, you know, anything about flying with a firearm, maybe I can answer you and help you guys out. Thanks for watching.